call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, 3. Welcome to the program. That's a very interesting scripture that we've been using. Uh, my name is Bob Butler, Agape and Praise Fellowship, and with me on my left is my co-host, Kendall Hedrick, been with us since January of 87. I had somebody just make a comment to us the other day about that. And we have a special guest again. Uh, he's not as special as he once was, no. uh, as far as a guest goes. Pastor Gary Miller from uh, Grace Fellowship Church in Iowa City, we're glad to have you sit in with us. Uh, we expect great things. Uh, he, did the, he did an excellent job when we were talking about the Grace series. Uh, we were relying on his notes quite heavily. Of course, he had an advantage because he was teaching on grace at, at church on Sundays, and so it fell right in place for him. And uh, when this program airs, you will have just finished watching the grace series. So uh, he's, he's, there's been a time element between the time you watched the grace series and now. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to shift gears and go another direction uh, with this teaching, and we're going to we're going to help dispel some untruths about some of these TV shows that you've been watching about angels. We're going to see what the Word of God says about it, and we're going to discuss what some theologians say about it, some of their thinking and some of their uh, studies from scriptures and from history books about angels and, and who they are and what they are and what they're here, what they're here to do, and, and we're all, where are all of them? I mean, how come you don't see so many of them? Uh, we're going to talk about some of these things. Uh, so I think before we kick this one off, let's let's just have a word of prayer. One of you want to volunteer, just pray for the people out there, and let's just let's just kick this off with a word of prayer. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we delight to be able to come before Thank you, you knowing that you're a good God and that you're always here to hear and answer prayer. And we know, especially as we pray, that that you give us revelation into your word and insight and illumination that. You're well willing to grant that because you desire that we get into your word and know more about you and the things that you're doing, the things that you promised to do, the things that we have now and the things that we have in store for us. So we just ask for that illumination and revelation to come into people's lives, to come into ours, even as we speak here and the, as we bring forth your word and, and what we've seen and what we've studied and what has come up out of our spirits. We just thank you that we will learn and be better equipped to deal with the spiritual realm around about us than what we were in the past. We thank you for that being manifest and true in the lives of everyone who sees this broadcast, whether it be uh, by tape or whether it be over the airwaves here. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. 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 Well, <clears throat> I thought the first thing I would do is start off with a definition. Uh, in this book, I'm reading out of this, uh, Thompson's Chain Reference Bible Survey. Now, you may have picked one up at your local bookstore. It's a handy little book to give you some insight into history and, and different uh, com commentaries about the different subjects. And uh, on this particular one, I'm going to look at the uh, angels he has in here. And uh, he starts out and says the word angels derived from the Hebrew M-A-L. A-K-H. Now that's the Hebrew word for angel. And in the Greek it's agalos, A-G-G-E-L-O-S. So there's, in, in the Old Testament, there's a word specifically dealing with angels. And that's that, uh, I call it Malachi, but I don't know because I'm not a Hebrew scholar. Uh, and, and in Greek, which is the New Testament primarily, it's agalos. So uh, angels are throughout the cover from Genesis to Revelation. There's angels in there talked about and, and manifested in, in in the Word as to why they're here and what they're doing. And he says that, the, that those two words simply mean messenger. Now in another dictionary I have, they say God's messenger. Uh, angels are mentioned 100 times in the Old Testament and 193 times in the New Testament. So, you know, you can see that angels definitely have a place uh, in the scripture, and so what is that place relevant to us? Uh, the scriptures define angels as supernatural created beings separated from creation of man. So angels and man are not the same creation. Uh, and he goes on here in, in a couple scriptures, in uh, Psalm 148 verses 2 through 5 and Colossians 1.16 where it talks about the angels. I'm going to look at that Colossians 1.16. I read this the other day when I was going through this. Uh, give us a place to start. 
Uh, just as you're, go ahead and let me you know, just say a few things as you're go ahead. finding your place. Um, you know, in, in recent, as Bob mentioned, in, in recent years there's been an increase um, in the media concerning the area of angels. I right. mean, uh, they had t such shows as Touched by an Angel, which had um, some good ratings and, and, you know, says some good things. Um, before that, Michael Landon show, Highway to Heaven, you know, here again, you know, portraying angels going around doing mm -hmm. good. But even closer to the present, uh, there was a movie came out um, called Michael, mm -hmm. and it was based on the Archangel Michael, and it was played by John Travolta. Well, it took more of a, you know, a, a negative portrayal of an angel, and so it portrayed angel uh, Michael is, is kind of a angel that was in the do doghouse, having his last time here on the earth. You only got so many times here on the earth, and this was his last time to be down here on the earth. <laughs> Not now. We're talking about the archangel Michael, mm -hmm. and so it portrayed him as an archangel with a drinking problem, <laughs> with a smoking problem, and he had a problem carousing with women, getting in the bar room brawls and so forth, and so. You know, uh, you hear some of these things, and, and you know you can be misguided if you don't know what the Bible says really about angels. Uh, another movie just recently with Nicolas Cage called *The City of Angels*, and it was a situation where where he you know was pulled between a love and a woman and wanting to be an angel. Well, ultimately he chose to be an angel. So here was a transformation of a human physical man over to being an angel. He was winding it both ways. And so, you know, if you hear those things, you can be misguided in your understanding as to, to what is an angel. And so, you know, as believers, uh, we can't be misguided or, or have the media or, or Hollywood shape our understanding of, of what an angel, you know, is. And then realizing this as well, that uh, there's a definite ministry of an angel. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and even folks that are, are Christian, you know, our, our perception a lot of times has always been the traditional view. Well, uh, just the little precious moments doll sitting with some wings and a harp on a cloud and so forth. And so we need a biblical understanding of an angel if God says that they're ministering spirits sent to minister on behalf of believers. And so hey, praise God for the foundation and, and, and so forth that, that we're able to give. Uh, through this program. That's that's uh, that's the point of this. I think that's why the Lord has had us give us the green light to go ahead and talk about angels because of these things that you you mentioned, and and that's one of the purposes I think to clear up some of the, the mis uh, miscommunications by, by miss. Hollywood and, and yeah they're just flat out miss. But but angels do exist and they do have a place and I I've got the Colossians one sixteen where it talks about this. Now this is scripture. Now the true Bible is true. I, most people will believe that the Bible is true, and uh, the things that are in the Bible are true. Now we could go further with that, but we'll leave it for that for right now. <laughs> and, and 16 it says, "For by Him were all things created." Now the "by Him" they're referring to there is Jesus. For by Jesus were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible. So here we've got two things: one you can see with your physical eyes, and one that you can't. And then he goes on to say, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Jesus and for him. All things were created by, for him and by him. Now, <clears throat> angels are created beings and they're invisible most of the time. And uh, as we go on through here, we'll see that they do become visible in different times and, and not on a TV show. <laughs> they become visible when there's a need that a particular person has. Uh, and going on here with his uh, little discussion here, you want to jump in here on some of this or are you ready to proceed on? pretty good so far. Okay, so <clears throat> they're created who, in, who God enjoys given power. In other words, they're not just out there with, with no authority and no power. They're just little babies with wings flying around just, you know, like is portrayed so often. That, that's not angels. Holy angels comprise an innumerable company. In other words, there's a lot of them. Uh, there's other scriptures. Hebrews 12, 22 is one that mentions uh, the number of angels that there are. Innumerable. Thousands on thousands on thousands, it says. Jesus makes reference to the legions of angels under his command in Matthew 26, 53. Their great numbers further suggested in Revelation 5, 11. So 
the writer of this acknowledges that the scripture points out the fact that there are a lot of angels. Now, as we studied, if we study back through to uh, the Old Testament where Lucifer, who was created as, as one of the highest angels and lost his status, he goes on then to, to Gabriel and Mike, you mentioned Michael. Michael is probably one of the better known angels by people because he's had a lot of publicity and he is listed as the only archangel of God. He has a, a specific rank, if you will, in God's uh, level of angels. Then in, uh, I lost my place here. These messengers are spirit beings who usually play, appear in a quasi-anthropomatic or human form. And that's in Acts 1.10 and Hebrews 1.14. And I want to go to Hebrews 1.14 because this is one that we use a lot in teaching about angels, uh, especially in the New Covenant where we live, because angels have a particular place relevant to the body of Christ. Now, if you're not in the body of Christ, they still have a place for you. You have a guardian angel. And, uh, and when you become a Christian and look back at your life, you can realize that there's times when your guardian angel saved your life. In, in Hebrews 1.14, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits? sent forth to minister <coughs> excuse me for them who shall be heirs of salvation that's the church <coughs> so we know that there are spirits out there spirit beings out there that were created to minister to us not only to us but for us mm -hmm. uh, you ready to jump in here yet no, carry on. <coughs> okay. Have you got anyone to add to this yet? Well, other than the fact what you've already mentioned too, I had in my notes when you... Go ahead. Just we're using the scripture to establish God created angels. Yes. Uh, in the Psalms as well, um, it talks about that God uh, commanded and then they were created. Mm -hmm. So the origin themselves are from God. Amen. Um, we would have to say too, you know, just from Job 38 7, that they were created before man. Yes. And so. That's a point uh, brought out too. And uh, what you had just said in Hebrews, um, they're spiritual beings. Yes. Okay. They're, they're not human beings. And so they are a spirit, but they don't, you know, and even though they take on the form, you know, and appear as men. Uh, they're again, they're not human, they're spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. Along with that, I want to bring up uh, one of my reference books when I was studying for this about angels. <clears throat> There's one of the books that makes, uh, makes reference to this definition where it says that they are messengers of God. And that's one part of the definition. And this one uh, Bible theologian uh, presents this argument that uh, we as Christians are giving the task to proclaim the good news of the gospel. And that's one of the that's one of your tasks as a Christian. And so because of that, you are spreading the good news of the gospel. You are serving as one of God's messengers. Mm -hmm. And he highlights that as to the fact that you are performing one of the angelic uh, duties by proclaiming the gospel. But yet you, as a human being, are not an angel. And then he goes on and makes reference to others who, who have proclaim the good news of the, or the gospel, but they are not angelic beings. And, and so <clears throat> we have to be careful. You know, a lot of people, well, there's, you know, little babies and such. They say, well, look at this darling little angel. Well, this darling is not an angel and never has been and, and never will be. Uh, even, even though some of them might have a little devil in them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it well, may seem that way. We'll get into the fact that there's good angels and bad angels. <laughs> yeah, I think you opened the door. We'll, we'll get there, yeah. Yeah, we opened the door. Well, uh, so we got to keep in mind that uh, just because you are a messenger of God, you may have a message sent from God for somebody, that doesn't make you an angel. Uh, and, and we'll see here as we go through here a little more about that, I presume. In general, angels are holy and serve Christ or God, but there are some evil angels over which whom Satan presides who defy or challenge God's authority and who inflict harm upon the children of God because of God's temporarily permissive will. Uh, 
we won't get into talking about will too much. We've mentioned it in other times, in other times where God has a perfect will and God has a permissive will. Uh, most people live in his permissive will. And uh, we, we won't get into the difference on that on this program, but we want you to remind you that, that <clears throat> you're probably, uh, just as an off right guess, that, that you're probably living in God's permissive will. Now, God has a perfect will. Jesus lived in his perfect will. He's the only one that I know that really did live in his perfect will. Does that mean that we can't get there? No. Uh, but <clears throat> So if we're talking about his permissive will, then, and it mentions Job here also where uh, he talked about some angels, both good and bad. <clears throat> he goes on to say, apparently Satan was once called Lucifer, which I'd mentioned a little earlier, and had heavenly status before he rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven. And that's in Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 19. It talks about Lucifer and how iniquity was found in him. Now, Lucifer was created as a high-ranking angel. Uh, if you go back and you want to study about Lucifer, you will find out that he was the one who took, he was responsible, I put it this way, for praise and worship in heaven before God and, and the host of people in heaven. Uh, he was of a high authority. Uh, some theologians say he was actually a higher authority than any of the other angels that God had created, which means he was at the top of the pile. Well, <clears throat> Michael and Gabriel were actually then, if, if that's the case, uh, were below the ranking of Lucifer. But Lucifer blew it because iniquity was found in him, so he was cast out of heaven. Now he became Satan or the devil instead of Lucifer. And, and we read on in uh, other places in the Bible, which we may or may not get to some of those scriptures, but <clears throat> the book of Revelation, uh, Satan is referred to as the dragon, the leader of evil forces, in battle against the divine army. And that's in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Satan and his followers are represented as being co-signed to eternal damnation in hell, 2 Peter 2, 4. But before that happens, as since he's not in heaven anymore and cannot go back to heaven anymore, he is here on earth. He was cast down to earth, and he brought one-third of the angelic beings, and, and this is in one of the dictionary that talks about, we really don't understand why one-third of the angels went with him. There's no definition, no scriptures that, that gives you the reasons why one third of the evil or the angel spirits went became evil spirits and went with Satan, Lucifer. So <clears throat> they came to Earth, and they they now are here in the air around Earth. They are spirit beings, and uh, now is where we get into some discussion among ministers and theologians as to the time frame of all of this. Now there is a. a theology out there that talks about a pre-Adamic earth and that Satan and, and all of these angels were relevant in that time frame as far as being cast down to the earth. And there's other theological positions that say, well, no, the pre-Adamic earth is not, there's no validity to it, so we got to take it from Adam and come from there on. <clears throat> Basically, what we're saying is that there, there's two theological positions and it's not a cut and dried uh, scripture to say that either one of them is absolutely correct. I think that if we study it out, we'll find out there are truths in both of them. Now we need to separate what those truths are so we can get a better, better understanding of, of, of the angelic beings, the evil spirits versus the good spirits. Now, I've said an awful lot there. <clears throat> You want to jump in here with anything? Well, just one comment. You know, you mentioned about Lucifer and the fact that, that you know, he made a choice, and and apparent, you know, the one third of the angels as well made a choice. And so, uh, you know, I, I think it's interesting to point out it and just use this phrase just to confuse folks that uh, they had the ability to choose, but not the right of choice. That's right. Concerning their election, and so you know, you may say, well. You know, because God doesn't give any plan of redemption for angels. That's right. Okay. And so you say, well, geez, gosh, that's mean. You you gave us an opportunity, but you don't give them an opportunity. How come? You know, God, that's just not fair. And so, you know, obviously, 
we see that they have the ability to choose some things they did. and make some choices. Now we don't know what that played, you know, in their role uh, before, uh, you know, uh, the fall of Lucifer. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible isn't clear, and anything would be, That's right. you know, probably speculation. But we do know that God uh, commanded and God created, and God had a specific purpose for them, and they left that purpose. And so they were created for that purpose, mm -hmm. where he gave man the ability to choice, or excuse me, the ability to choose and to make choice. That's right. Well, it doesn't seem that that same right was given to the angels, and they did go beyond their limit, which God did set in place. And so, you know, they're forever condemned. There is no redemption for an angel. You pointed out one of the, one of the things that, that distinguishes angels from humans is that freedom of choice. One other distinction that I mentioned here early on was that they are spirit beings. Well, we're spirit beings also, but we have a flesh body to live in, which they don't have. Now, they come sometimes and are revealed as a flesh body, <clears throat> but yet it isn't a flesh body. It's revealed to us, and we'll read here as we go through, and we'll find out that <clears throat> when they're ministering to a particular person and need to be revealed to that person, they sometimes appear as a human body, but but they're actually not. Uh, going on here with his paragraphs is as to the general designations given to angels, there are two exceptions. Reference is made to the angel of the Lord, and here he, he makes uh, scripture Genesis and, and uh, Genesis sixteen seven and and twenty one seventeen talks about the angel of the Lord, and it's referring. Some theologians say, well, that's referring to Jesus. <clears throat> that's not referring to an angel, but it's referring to Jesus. And another distinction that's made is, and the angel of his presence in Isaiah 63, 9. And there again, the theologians say, well, this is actually referring to Jesus, not an angel. As indicated earlier in this chapter, the angel of the Lord is not created being, but is the creator himself. Now, this is the theological position. <clears throat> the very Son of God, this angel of the Lord, considered to be Jesus Christ, was higher than the angels. But when he took on the human body, he consented, condescended to becoming a little lower than the angels. And that goes back to Psalm, where you were talking about the angels we mentioned in Psalm. <clears throat> in Psalm 8, verses 5 and 6, it refers to Jesus when he came as the Son of Man. He gave up his uh, status as deity, part of the triune God's uh, attributes, to, to have the attributes of, of man. And that's what he's referring to here. And in Hebrews 2, 7, and 8, uh, goes back to that. I want to read that. Hebrews 2, 7, and 8, because that, I believe, uh, would probably say it better than I can. Hebrews 2, 7, and 8. It says here that... <clears throat> Thou madest him, Jesus, a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. In other words, there's still the spirit, or the death is one that is mentioned. The physical death is one that's mentioned that, that hasn't been done away with yet. Mm -hmm. Jesus has yet to fulfill that aspect of his ministry on this earth, according to the theologians. Now, <clears throat> uh, I just got derailed. <laughs> well, if you read on down in 9 there, you get into the fact that we, you know, we don't see all that come in yet, but we see Jesus who for the suffering of death, and it was that suffering of death which put him in that lower position because... Yes. Angels, being spirit beings, don't die. Don't, don't die. At what we call a physical death. Right. He was limited to this, to to time and place and physical life and properties like we are, and angels are not limited to time and physical properties. However, when when we really look at death, and I think maybe a time or two we have talked about the fact that that death is not a step, you know, not a, a cessation of anything. You know, we die, but we don't cease to exist. That's right. Uh, our spirit being still lives, just like an angelic right. spirit being. Uh, and uh, there, and we we'll get into it, the fact that there are some of those angels who are separated from God, uh, the same as, as some humans 
are in right. what we call hell, and they are separated from God. Yes. And again, it was their choice. Right. They chose to come from that. And again, I don't know how yeah. deep we'll get into our, our theological discussions here. Because, and just to say because this, Because it can really, you know, I mean, there's a lot of neat stuff in there. Hell was created for Lucifer. That's right. right. the angels, fallen right. angels. Right. Right. You know, exactly. it was never created for man or to, you know, incarcerate man for eternity. That's right. And so, you know, that, that's good to point out because, uh, you know, basically angels are incarcerated, or at least an element of them right. are incarcerated now. And and will be, you know, <laughs> that that will be, I mean, you know, they, they've been for how many centuries, mm -hmm. millennia maybe. We really don't um, know. They have been yeah. in, in that kind of separation, and yet, uh, and, 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 and yet some of them seem to be free and some of them aren't and, and how God, you know, uh, makes this distinction and, and um, there again, you know, uh, fortunately God is the one that decides who is separated and who isn't. That's right. And uh, we don't get to do that or have to do that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I wouldn't want to be the one that, that had to choose uh, whether or not we were. Well, he's got one more sentence here, and then he gets into the hierarchy of the good angels. Okay. Uh, so we'll probably get into that next session. But this one last one says, After this earthly humiliation, he was exalted above the angels with glory and honor. And that's in Hebrews 1, 4, 6, and, and Hebrews 2, 7, which we didn't read those, but we read the ones where he was made a little lower mm -hmm. to accomplish his mission here on earth before he went back to his uh, position as deity in heaven, sitting on the right hand of God the Father. And because he did that, now we've been given authority and power, and we've been given angels, as it says in Hebrews 1.14, to help us minister the way God intended to be ministered. I, I want to add one thing that Pastor Gary said about hell. Uh, people go to hell because they don't make the right choices. I mean, we as human beings have been given the choice of right and wrong. Uh, that's what started this whole mess and back in the Garden of Eden. When Adam made a bad choice, uh, and, and he had the right to make that choice. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have a choice of whether we're going to go with the angels into hell where, where God never intended us to go, or whether we're going to go and spend eternity with, with God and, and the good angels from then on. And, and eternity is, is not something that's limited. I mean, it, eternity is, is, when you were created spirit, you're going to have eternity. But the eternity you have is going to be based on your decisions on what you do. Your decision will be, well, I won't accept Jesus. I'm not going to do anything. Well, then you've made your decision, and you will go with the fallen angels and the devil into hell. Mm -hmm. Now, if you make the decision, yes, I'll accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Well, the minute you do that, now you become a born-again creature, as we've talked about in other programs. Now your eternity... It's not in hell, but it's in heaven, and with God, wherever God goes, you can go. And not only will go, or could go, but will go. So, uh, we're winding down on this program, and I, I kind of wanted to get a groundwork laid here, and, and probably we should refer back to it from time to time just to refresh all of our memories, uh, just what angels are, and why are they here. We're going to find out that there are a multiplicity of duties for angels. Some angels are in heaven and will never leave heaven. Uh, some angels go from heaven to earth all the time. That's that's part of their messenger work. Some angels are stationed here on earth to minister to us. There are some angels that are stationed to one particular individual as his guardian. And that's all they do. Now, we're going to get into this and talk about this in some of the other programs. So I hope we've stimulated your uh, your thinking. And we'll let Kendall wrap this one up. He's got less than a minute to do it, and he's good at doing it. <laughs> Okay, uh, here again, we are, we're starting out and we're just, you know, you're going to have to bear with us a little bit because there's a lot to deal with. Uh, as you begin to look and see, there has been in times past a lot of uh, theological discussion done about angels. You may have already heard, uh, you know, the, the expression, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin or the point of a pin, you know. Uh, dealing with, uh, going back and, and just touching just a little bit on a, uh, a theological discussion that was made in the church in times past about angels and their ability to express space, you know, and how 
uh, how they, uh, they operate in doubtless space. So we're going to be dealing with angels and, and what they do and what we can expect of them and how they minister to us and for us and how to, uh, you know, how to keep them happy and, and how to uh, uh, keep them on our side. So tune in again to Great and Mighty Things and we'll continue to deal with angels.